Welcome to Post Fight with Ray Thompson. This show is powered by MMA Crypt and MMA Mental. For more interviews and podcasts, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, MMA Crypt and MMA Mental. You can also follow MMA Crypt on Facebook and Twitter. It's at MMA Crypt on Twitter and MMA Crypt on Facebook. To follow me, it's at MMA Mental on Twitter and Ray Thompson on Facebook. I'm now joined by Trevor Hotsaw Smith who's coming off a win against Tor Trong at UFC Fight, Fight Night 46, winning by unanimous decision, 29-28 on all scorecards, taking his pro record to 12-5 and five and his UFC record to 2-2. Two and two. Trevor, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Ray. It's a pleasure to be talking with you. I'm back here in the States, so I'm sitting comfortably in my office at home. Yeah, it was a, a hell of a... I can imagine it was a hell of a journey. Well, congratulations on picking up a big win as well at UFC in Dublin. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the crowd and everything, but I want to talk about the fight first, because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of talk about the atmosphere there, so we will get to that. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about the build-up to the fight. Now, you were facing Tor Trong. Uh, what were your views on him as an opponent going into the fight? Uh, you know, there's a lot of hype on him. Everybody says he's one of the best in Europe, and they talk about him being on a tough show, hurting guys. And from what I've seen in his fights, he always seems like a real athletic guy. So, you know, I was expecting a dude with a similar skill set and being real strong and being able to grind people out if you needed to. And I thought it was uh, pretty evenly matched for where I had in my career. So, it kind of went the way I expected. Now, in the first round, he had quite a lot of success in the clinch. How did you feel the first round went? Uh, he had a lot of success in the clinch, like you said. I didn't expect him to come out with that uh, game plan or try to, like, mess me or put me on the fence. I really expected him to come out and try to strike more. So he caught me by surprise and a little bit uh, flat on my feet with the clinch work. So I just kind of had to weather a little bit of nerves that you get before fighting in front of a crazy crowd like that and go to the second and third and do what I do and get that win. Now, in the second round, he took you down quite early, but you were able to reverse him and you worked from the top uh, position. How superior did your grappling feel? Certainly felt like the difference in the fight watching it was, was your grappling. I mean, even when he took you down on top, you were quick to reverse him. You had some really nice takedowns yourself. Now, going into the third round, did you feel it was one round each? Uh, yeah, I did. I felt it. Well, I actually felt that I might have been able to have the first one too. So I figured the you know, worst case, it was one round each because I felt like I took the second round pretty easy. And best case scenario, I had two rounds. But either way, you still, I mean, you're looking at that, you got to win every single round. So I definitely went in with the... Uh, the mindset that I needed to win that third round going into it. Now, once again, the difference in the final round was your superior grappling. How confident were you that you'd won the decision? Uh, I, I was so breathing hard. I mean, I look back at the video, I'm like, man, that was a lot closer than I wanted it to be. I thought I, uh, you know, I won, but you never know what judges are thinking. And so it was much closer than I, what I, I would have liked to have it. But I think it was still pretty, uh, it was pretty decisive victory. Now, there's, there's been a lot of talk about the atmosphere in Dublin. What was it like for you to fight in front of those fans? <laughs> it was the best MMA experience that I've had so far in my career. Uh, the place filled up and had 10,000, a capacity of 10,000, I believe. It was sold out in like three minutes. But for that 10,000, those people were so loud and into the fights. I've never seen fans like it. So it was it was great to be part of it. Conor McGregor really sold for the show. And you feel the energy in the building whenever he was fighting. I mean, it was. It, I mean, I, I was there in the crowd as well. Uh, uh, it was absolutely amazing. I mean, I mean, I've been to quite a lot of events, and you you, you normally see the the crowd gradually fill up towards you get the main card and then the main event. But I mean, this place was filled from the opening fight, wasn't it? Let's be. It was right from when Paddy Hollihan stepped out there to fight Josh Sampo. The the the, the place was booming already, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, from the very start, like you said, it, it's like they got there an hour early, they'd already been drinking, so they were all there for the first fight, and they were already lubricated, ready to go. They'd already had, you know, three or four beers each, so from the very first fight to the very last fight of the night, they were going crazy. Only in the uh, celebration when McGregor won, they actually started throwing their beers, and it looked like it was, you know, raining in the facilities when we were in there. It was uh, an experience, for sure. 
It, it, yeah, I, I, I mean, I got sprayed with beer as well. Was that the loudest crowd you've experienced in MMA? Yeah, that was my loudest crowd for sure. Yeah, I've heard a lot of other people saying that was one of the loudest they've been involved in. I know in my own personal experience, I've never seen the crowd louder or more into it. Was you surprised by the crowd? Uh, not really. You know, I went in there expecting people to be crazy. When you hear a fight sounds out in three minutes, uh, I expected it to be crazy, so I kind of lived up to my expectations. I went in thinking it was going to be absolutely crazy, and the Irish fans delivered, they lived up to the expectations. Now, with hindsight, of course, there's been a lot of talk now about fighters saying they want to fight in Dublin. Are you pleased that you were, you were, you were part of this card and, and you know you got to experience that first time and you're one of the first guys really to experience it as well? Yeah, no, I mean it was it was like I said it was a great experience. I stayed for actually like three days when I was done, and uh, Ireland is definitely my the coolest place that I've been to in my life. That's why I went to Abu Dhabi. I've been all over the states and fought a lot of different places, but Ireland was you know home away from home. Not only were the fans cool, but we went out, out afterwards to experience the people. I've never met so many nice people in my life, and I'm sure I've met at least two or three lifelong friends when I was out there. Oh, that's, not, that's nice to hear you say. Now, you're 2-2 two and two in the UFC. Who would you like to face next? And when, ideally, would you like to get in and compete? Oh, man, who next? I, I don't really care. I like the... Uh, and I can't remember the... Pinhurst or whatever his name was. The Irish guy looked like he'd be a great fight. He took some serious damage and came back. It looked like a dude I'd really like to fight. He fights with some heart. Uh, really, whoever the UFC wants me to fight, but I want to try to fight within the next three months. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm trying to do and what helped me improve over the last year is make a strong fight every three or four months and correcting mistakes and moving on up. So the guy you're referring to is Cathal Pendred, the one that uh, got the one fight of the night. Is that right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, well, I really appreciate you giving me your time, and I mean, I was part of that crowd. It was absolutely amazing. So it was, and it was great to to be able to see you fight live as well. For sure, I'm glad you were there. Next time you're gonna have to come out too, so you can meet face to face and see what's up. Absolutely, yeah. I'll I'll certainly be looking to do that in the future. Now, uh, before we let you go, Trevor, I just want to give you a chance to do some shout outs. So, is there anyone you want to thank? Uh, your sponsors, and you also want to shout out your Facebook and your Twitter. I didn't see him as much as I wanted for this last fight, but he's my strength and uh, conditioning coach. Old Bulgarian guy just has the, the perfect mindset that really gets me prepared for these fights. And uh, also Nick Wallach, who's been rolling me on the ground. So it's probably uh, part of the reason my ground game was so dominant against Tor when I went out there, because Mr. Wallach's been working with me a lot and giving me a lot of uh, repetitions and time on the ground. So thank you. Thank you to all those guys, Eric and Neil and Nick, especially. Well, I look forward to seeing you step in the cage again, Trevor. Thank you very much for your time.